So provide an overview of exit device choices, options, applications, and information for users and designers to reduce misapplications. We'll discuss building code uh, administrations, laws, and industry standards for providing security and safety measures while providing assembly and emergency egress to meet um, the legal aspects of a building and building de design. So I'm going to talk to you guys about um, some interesting things that have been going on in the past couple of days that I um, heard about, uh, I've seen, and that I think will pertain well to this class. One of those things being head case dogging and also visual indication on center, um, center rail dogging. Those two applications I think are going to be important whenever it comes to X devices. But as we move through this program, I'll bring them up. I don't want to start off with that because, I mean, you guys are probably like, what the heck are they talking about? We haven't even learned about um, X devices and you're already throwing jargon and nomenclature out there that we don't even know about. So let's move through the class. And then as it comes up, I want to bring up those two specific topics because um, some of the most important things with exit devices are the ability to exit. Um, a, a very important thing with fire rated exit devices is the ability to always stay latched and always provide uh, free egress, whether it be through a corridor, a stairwell, something like that. Um, and then the last one being on exteriors, being able to provide free egress out and have the ability to um, have lockdown whether it be mechanically or access control, um, which is electrified doc, um, lockdown in the event of an emergency. And so those two items that I just mentioned provide a very, very interesting subject matter um, for schools, um, hospitals, synagogues, churches, and things like that. So we'll, we'll get to them here in just a second. Some of our learning objectives today, understand X device types. Why are, why are there different types? Providing security and safe egress for zoning, regulatory and code compliance. Um, analyze conditions and select appropriate X device types. Let me move over just a little bit so that way you can see this. Um, <clears throat> select appropriate types of X device types, styles and applications for windows and openings to accommodate building form and enable efficient traffic control. Specify X device products which know your components and terms to comply with life safety, building code, and accessibility requirements for inclusion and submittals and hardware schedules to enable equal access by users and owners of buildings. Evaluate desirable qualities when selected and specifying exit devices. Support lead, ISO 14001, um, world-class manufacturing, ADA, et cetera for preserving or preservation and reuse of buildings that provide architectural grade one products for structural integrity and soundness of the building. So those are our learning objectives today. I don't know if we'll get to all of them, but um, we'll definitely tap on them a little bit. So exit devices, what are the critical areas that they provide for a building? The first and most important one is fire and life safety solutions. Um, high use, high abuse solutions, um, aesthetic solutions, and then ADA accessibility solutions. So the unique thing about an exit device, which I would say that uh, most hardware that's in our industry today also uh, is in compliance with a lot of this, but the unique thing about exit devices, um, they provide multi-point latching. If you are using a concealed or, or surface vertical rod, they, they, um, they provide aesthetics. Um, if you have a concealed vertical rod, you have just a push bar or it could be an integral push bar that um, is not seen on the door. Um, it also has aesthetics on the rail of a uh, exit device where you have on the pool side, nice pools, beautiful pools. You have a ton of different options that also meet ADA. Um, high use, high abuse. An exit device is rated, um, you know, as rated for high use, boom, 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 crashing into the door all day. Um, it's, it's rated for exteriors and things like that. And fire and life safety solutions, where you have a stairwell, um, where you have an exit corridor, things like that. Um, you always have free egress, um, and you always have uh, latching and you know self closing and things like that with, with the ability of a closer. So. They meet all the four criteria that are needed in a uh, safe building. How to choose an exit device. 
Some of the objectives today will be, what is an exit device? You know, what do they look like? Um, how are they used? How they evolved over the years? What's the purpose? Why is it needed? Uh, we can talk about some of the, um, you know, some of the most recent things, such as leaving a door open in a fire rated opening, such as in the Bronx, where they had they left the door open and things like that the space heater caused a fire ended up burning down an entire building um the chicago fire the chicago apartment fire new jersey the nightclub um what are the purpose why is it needed how do we uh, keep our building safe um where is it used is it just used at exteriors are they just used in stairwells um, are they just used in exit corridors no any place where you have a large number of people um, that would require uh, fast egress for life safety, uh, 50 or more persons, you would use an X device. Anywhere that you have high voltage in an electrical room or an electrical closet, a fire riser room, um, you would use an X device because instead of having, you know, they always talk about um, the knowing act of um, locking hardware, such as a mortise lock where you push down on the lever or a cylindrical lock where you push down on the lever or something like that. With an X device, you don't have to push down on anything you just like the name um, says you crash into it it's going to open critical selection issues and then different exit device types some more objectives are <clears throat> some of the exit device styles applications components and terms typical options desirable qualities so typical options this is where it's going to get into some of that um, cylinder dogging, center line or uh, head case dogging, um, visual indicator on the rail. You know, what is touch sense? You know, what is a touch sense bar? What is motorized latch attraction? We're going to get into all of that. What is an exit device? As it starts with the most basic term, I'll read this section for you. But as it starts with the most basic term, and the preferred term, um, an exit device, uh, which is the preferred term of crash bars or push bars, um, indicated actual purpose of mechanism. The device facilitates exit through the opening, and that is from um, you know our most common definition. But from ANSI 156.3, a door latching assembly incorporating an actuating mechanism, usually called an activating bar which releases latch bolts upon application of forces and direction of travel. <clears throat> so as we move through a corridor and a door is shut and it has an exit device, <clears throat> as you push or activate um, the bar, it will release latches, um, allowing you free egress in the direction of travel. Push bar, no, this describes the operation, but not the purpose. So. <clears throat> If a device was dogged down, it would become a push bar. But there are other um, devices in our industry, such as a dummy rail, which are, <clears throat> are intended to be push bars. Um, there are also push bars that go on vestibule doors that um, do not latch. Um, so there's a very distinguishable difference between an exit device and a push bar. And know that difference um, when describing it to a, uh, a distributor and a user or an architect, because if um, you tell someone you want a push bar, say you're in an area that's fire rated and you want a push bar, but and they provide you a push bar, but it doesn't latch. Now that door is not in compliance. Crash bar. Um, this is a slang term. We've used this term since, you know, since, you know, for the past 40, 50 years. What this it's intended for is, you know, facility managers and things like that. They always talk about a crash bar, but that crash bar, if you guys can remember, it's that old trolley bar that um, that we used to use back in the 70s and 80s. Um, as you crash into it, it releases. Um, it is a slang term, so please do not use it. Um, the proper term is X device. What's the purpose? Why is it needed? Safe emergency egress, the most important portion of it all. Uh, safe exit from a building, but also, you know, the the ability to always have that opening latching um, protects the building, from, you know, as it, as it closes. So not only is it the exit of the building, but protecting the building uh, as it stands anyway in the stairwell and things like that. 
barrier free access accessibility in ADA NC A117.1 security authorized entrance and felt safe exit so security is the most important one and this is one of the, the uh, times when I'm going to hit on that head case dogging if you are um, at a school at a hospital at a synagogue and you have a uh, specification that calls for head case dogging um, not head case uh, locking and unlocking you might want to be wary of how that is being used in your facility in the event of a shooter situation or an emergency situation if that opening is mechanically dogged down especially at an exit you have no way to lock that door down um, so in the in one of those events we recently had one in texas um, you have no way you have no ability to lock that opening down which me means your building is compromised so any manufacturer out there that has um, an option that allows you to do that make sure that you're putting it into a an opening that um, you know you don't deem as needed to be safe if you are dogging a door down which what dogging means is as you turn a key it pushes the pad down on the exit device and it allows free egress in and out it's no longer self-latching um, it does close but it no longer latches so in a fire rated opening this is not allowed um, as you guys know a fire rated opening has to be self-latching and self-closing and if you didn't know that uh, one of my previous training tuesdays uh, we discussed that in detail so fire and smoke containment and compartmentalization this is what we were talking about with the bronx fire compartmentalization is one of the most important um, things and containing a fire having the ability to control where a fire is going and how a fire gets stopped and the ability to contain a fire um, until fire rescue and and um, personnel get there is very important without that ability if a door in a fire rated opening is left open um, your whole building goes up in either smoke or in flames comply with fire and safety codes self-latching and self-closing as um, your most important fire fire safety or fire code life safety code is free egress and an exit device complies with both of those comply with building codes authority having jurisdiction which um it's a silly thing to put in there but yes it does comply with the the ahj because it does meet building codes and it also meets uh, life safety and fire code so NFPA 80, uh, Life Safety 101, the occupancy requirements, the building code, which is IBC 2012, 2016, whichever one you guys are using in your jurisdiction, um, the BOCA code and the SBC, and the AHJ provides code interpretation. So the AHJ is your final authority as far as um, interpreting your codes and standards, but most of them comply with um, our most current code. Where are exit devices used? Stairwell doors, cross corridor doors, exit doors, and exit only doors. So at a stairwell where you're leaving the first floor and there's no way to come back in, uh, is where you would see an exit only door or the back of house at a hotel. Um, exit doors could be in a school, a hospital, um, an office space, conference room, um, a training area, cross corridor doors, um, containing fire, um, containing um, personnel in between in between a corridor, protecting lives, and then the most important stairwell doors. So stairwell doors, um, you know, they always have to be self latching and self closing. You're usually going to find an exit device in those areas. Um, as you move through an exit device going down a corridor, um, depending on the size of your building. Um, you'll have the uh, you know the ability to go back inside some of them but um, they're always self-latching which is what's really important with your stairwell high occupancy areas so we were talking about a space you know like a cafeteria or an auditorium a gym i mean an e exit in an emergency the flow of people from interior to exterior of the building so if we're in a gymnasium that has you know 200 or 300 people or maybe even a thousand people um, you have exit devices located at um, each one of your exit 
spaces, part of your egress path. And those will be exit devices where they are rim exit devices with a mullion in the center or surface vertical rod or a single rim exit device. Um, it just controls the flow. Integrated to perimeter, so restricted or authorized entrance with provisions for fire under alarm conditions. So this could be a place where in your school where you have a an exit device that has motorized latch retraction or a um, electrified uh, strike um, with a rim exit device, a mechanical rim exit device, or electrified trim. Um, you monitor access as you, um, you know, most of you guys probably have kids in this class. If you do not, you probably have gone to get your nephew or your niece or maybe even gone to college uh, or maybe you're even in school. But you walk up to um, any secure space in a school. Uh, nowadays, you have to ring a buzzer. They allow you to go in. Um, you turn the exit device or you push on the exit device or you pull on the exit device um, or, you know, the trim for the exit device and allows you to go into a safe space. Well, in that safe space, you cannot go into the next, um, you know, the next area or the main area. If it's a school, it'd probably be a cafeteria. If it's an elementary school or a lobby of a high school or middle school, um, it doesn't allow you entrance into that next space until you're cleared by uh, administration and say if you aren't clear you can always leave but you can't go back you can't go in and security systems part of access control so touch sense bar um, what that is is a monitoring device that goes at the uh, rail of an exit device so the push pad portion of the exit device could have a touch sense um, which tells your alarm system hey someone's touching this device if it's delayed egress um, it might um, allow you to touch it for a number of seconds, 15 to 30 seconds. But once that um, time has expired, um, an alarm will sound. Um, you could have motorized latch retraction. Um, you could have electrified latch retraction. There's a big difference between the two of those that we'll get into later. But basically, motorized latch retraction has an electrified motor, and electrified latch retraction is operated via solenoid. You could have electrified trim. You could have cylinder dogging. You could have less dogging or less bottom rod. All of these are different options. Some more uh, critical selection issues. Um, labeled or listed, tested and approved by an authorized agency. So um, if it's labeled, it would be fire rated, hurricane rated, uh, wind rated, uh, you know, things like that. If it's barrier free, it would, um, you know, it would allow egress at five pounds. Um, one place that you see this is California. Is it panic rated? So are you approved for use on non fire rated or listed doors and an emergency path of egress approved for use on fire listed doors and the emergency path of egress. So you'll see a UL listing on the exit device um, at the chassis and the head cover and on the rail. Door style width. Um, vertical member of the door structure with dimension impacts product selection. Wide or medium style. So this is going to be on aluminum doors. Um, a wide style door is going to be <clears throat> over five inches. A medium style door is five inches. And then you have a narrow style door, which is less than. Um, and all of those are going to have different types of exit device, uh, different types of exit devices that are going to impact what you're doing. Uh, vertical member on the latch or pivot side edge will accept narrow, medium, or wide style device. Narrow style. Vertical member on the latch or pivot side of the edge requires a narrow style device. And they all look different. Um, they, and they all operate the same, but they all look a little bit different. Traffic control. People flow, volume, um, evaluate expected traffic flow based on building type and occupancy. Egress, is it an exit device or is it an exit um, for a device? Ingress, you know, limiting the entrance. What's the building going to be used for? Electronic interface um, or system control. So you're going you're gonna to find um, exit devices that maybe from eight to five, Monday through Friday, you want your door to be electronically dogged down. Uh, and the only way that it will undog itself is 
in the event of a fire or an emergency, a lockdown protocol, something along those lines. Security, um, lockdown protocol, authorized entrance and a fail safe exit device. Monitoring, door status, uh, access control, um, which limits the ingress and egress of a opening. And then lastly, fire, fire alarm control system. So basically, <clears throat> There are a number of things that you have to look for when selecting an exit device, and they all basically pertain to um, leaving a safe space in your opening, whether it be access control, if it's fire rated, um, or if it's limiting ingress into an opening. Um, all those are critical in selecting an exit device. And then the last one is going to be barrier free environment, the accessibility code. Uh, no thumb turn piece operated, you know, with the trim. So what that is, is in A117.1, you have to use a lever of scussion. Um, you can't use a thumb piece to enter a uh, facility. So that's going to be on your entrances and things like that. Um, Non-ADA compliant openings, you can use a thumb piece, um, but it's critical that uh, you understand which openings are going intended for ADA use or accessible use. So let's look at some exit device types. <clears throat> As you can see here, the top one here um, is called a crossbar. And this exit device here, they're still in use for and it's still in use today. Um, some of the negatives towards this exit device, um, there was a, a movie um, back in the 80s where, you know, Denzel Washington, I believe, he um, wanted to create a safer school. And one of the things that he did was he would chain up um, the exit devices where he limited the people that were going out and coming back in. That's a big no-no. Um, I mean, most facilities know now that you can't chain up openings. Most schools now, they don't even allow um, a crossbar exit device in their school. A lot of existing facilities still have them and they're still being purchased to this day, but um, they can be chained. They're not very secure. A coat hanger trick uh, from the bottom of the door. Basically um, what this is, is, you can take a coat hanger and if, I mean, most exit devices are located at 39 and 15 16 from the uh, above finished floor. Um, and what that is is 42 inches above standard finished floor, but once you apply, um, you know, undercuts and things like that, you're left with 40 inches above finished floor. And what you do is you take a coat hanger and at that 40 inches, you make an L um, and you leave the hook portion of the hanger. You can basically uh, slide it underneath the door, rotate it 90 degrees, um, hook that crossbar, pull on it and uh, open the door from the opposite side. Very dangerous. Paddle type, um, where you would see these normally, um, you know, they say typical, typically limited to hospital applications, but the main place that I see these um, is gonna be your back of house on strip malls and things like that, where you are, you know, you need just like a, uh, an elbow space to open a door, um, to allow yourself <clears throat> entrance to, or egress to, a dumpster or something like that, or even an alarmed um, exit device where I think you have some from some manufacturers where they have that paddle exit device, but it's alarmed all the time. You'll see that in strip malls and things like that, but you'll also see these in hospitals. Folding touchpad. And the operating mechanism or the pad is the full length of the device. And as you can see this here, it's the full length of the device. Um, what they've required or what the standard is now is two thirds of the overall opening. Um, so you'll see this full length device, but it'll only extend on the opening two thirds of the opening, maybe more, but it won't go from end to end. But the minimum is two thirds. And as you can see it here with a partial link touchpad, this is pretty common where you have a dogging device or dogging mechanism here. You have the push pad, you have the head case, and then you have the latching mechanism on this side. Um, this is pretty typical in a rim exit device. 
So minimum, minimum length of operating mechanism is one half the width of the door, but it extends over two thirds the width of the door. Permits field retrofit into a device. So alarmed exit, cylinder dogging, uh, motorized latch retraction. It, uh, there's space inside this rail right here to allow you to add in um, some things in the field. So if you wanted to put in an alarm kit, you would have a cylinder that needs to go in right here. So a manufacturer would send you a new um, hinge filler or device rail, and then they'll send you an alarm kit that goes inside here. The alarm itself will be located right here though. Flush panel and door. So you see this in hospitals. You also see this in uh, some high-end churches and things like that. And what that is, is it's not a very good photo, but where the exit device itself is, there's a notch out in the door on the top and the bottom. And this crash bar itself is a part of the opening. So instead of being surface mounted on a flush door, this is actually part of the door. One manufacturer that's really big in this is called Right Door, but um, I know that since this is an AIA class, we shouldn't talk about things like that. But if, if you want more information, Right Door, it's not a company that I represent, uh, but they're really big on this. Um, a couple other manufacturers also provide exit devices, you know, for an integral door, but they're a big manufacturer in doing this. So, only touchpad is visible, so it's very aesthetically pleasing, like we talked about earlier. The actual latching portion of it is at the top and at the bottom. And the door must be specially prepared. That is one of the most critical portions of ordering um, one of these types of doors. It's very special. Um, parts and pieces and things like that. Installation, uh, troubleshooting, um, fixing the door after the building is settled always becomes a problem. And as it says at the last one, typically more difficult to prepare and install. So electronic control, which is this device right here. I'm gonna check this out. So as you can see right here with this one right here, this is a delayed egress exit device. It's a, an alarmed exit device. It has a um, mechanical override, but this mechanical override right here only overrides the alarm after it's been sounded. So this is a key switch that resets this alarm. So what happens is you have a touch sense um, switch or relay in this pad right here. And what happens is, as, as it says, after 15 seconds, an alarm will sound. You come up to this device and you push on it, nothing will happen. You'll feel the device go in just slightly, but nothing will happen in the beginning. After 15 seconds, the, the device will push in all the way, and um, this alarm that's right here will sound, and this um, visual indicator will start to turn red. It'll flash or maybe stay in a solid state, but it will indicate to um, whoever's monitoring this opening that something is wrong. Someone has left this room uh, and there's a problem. So where you typically see these are going to be in memory care, hospitals, um, you know, some some strip malls and things like that, uh, where you do have a monitored opening um, and you want to delay, um, you know, you want to delay egress for a limited amount of time, but you can never delay um, egress or you can never stop egress from an opening unless it's a special space. So electronic control, there's electron, there's electrified options, monitoring. So that's the monitoring of this door, which would be either the touch sense that sends a signal to your access control system or the alarm, um, you know, status indicator on an alarm exit device, which would be this little red dot right here. Control of uh, egress and ingress, delayed egress, um, other electronics are available, and we'll get into some of those other options um, later in the program. Exit device styles. So let's go back to where you can see me because I know you guys love to see me. Medium and wide style device. So common and commercial where this right here is a medium and wide style rim exit device. This is a narrow style rim exit device. This is that full length um, device, but right here is the big difference 
see how this is um, wider than this? Basically, as you look at a door on an aluminum storefront, this usually only per pertains to aluminum storefront where you have a narrow style, which the style is smaller. If the, the style is too small, this right here will not, um, will not be able to install properly because you have to have a two and three quarter, two and 13 sixteenths, or three and one sixteenth with some manufacturers back set before you even install this screw right here. So that means that this screw right here will be into glass. And so what the style is, it's the vertical member of a door. Um, you don't see my cursor. Okay, check this out. Can you see, can you see, can we see it now? Rob, can you see this now? Oh, hmm. Basically the top device, the top device that you see in this slide, and then the second device, that is the difference between the wide style and the narrow style. The wide style, this second screw right here, this through bolt, is the big important portion. And as I was saying just a while ago, you have a medium and narrow style, and then there's that glass that goes in between, um, which is a, you can either have a full light or two light uh, as the, the most standard uh, applications. But basically, a lot of people will confuse that mid rail with, you know, the, the portion that needs to comply with the, the exit device. And it's the vertical member that has to comply with the exit device because that vertical member is very important. If you have a very small vertical member, you have to use a narrow style device. And that's this right here. And if you guys want, I can switch this to um, just a standard Teams meeting. Might be easier. But anyways, so as we go through the exit device styles, medium and, and wide style, it's very common and commercial. Larger chassis and cover requires larger styles in, or reinforcement in the door. A narrow style device, um, sometimes used on aluminum doors, a lot of times used on aluminum doors, has a very small chassis, works on narrow style doors, aesthetically pleasing. So, you know, as they, you know, went to accommodate a door that has a narrower style, you have more glass, you have more available of um, visual appearance, and it makes this exit device smaller. So it gives the appearance of a nicer looking device because you don't have that big, broad um, head case on the door. So it's more aesthetically pleasing. Standard device. This is an economical device. The bottom device, which is this one right here, it's lower cost. Um, it's very limited in finishes. Most of the time it comes in painted finishes and things like that. Most of the time, the head case and the end cap are plastic and it's very limited as far as applications. You're gonna see this on um, very economical doors, back of house and hotels sometimes, uh, but most of the time it's gonna be in strip malls and uh, light commercial applications. So, what are some of the applications that are used? Rim device. A rim device is gonna be <clears throat> one of the most standard applications that you'll hear about. Everything is surface mounted. It's very easy to use, very easy to install. Because it's surface mounted, it's easy to, it's very easy to install. Um, it's a simple application, simple preparation. Um, single point latching. That single point latching is right in the center of this case right here. So the next one is vertical rod. Surface vertical rod is this one right here. As you can see, this has multi points of latching. If you are using a surface vertical rod and a fire rated a fire rated opening, and you specify less bottom rod, it you have to have another component because you have to have that door latching um, at multiple points. Surface vertical rod latches latches at the top and the bottom of a two latch um, of two of door two latch points, excuse me, more components. So it does have more components than a rim exit device, but um, it could have less components if you think about it. If you have a pair of doors in a uh, corridor, the old way would suggest using 
a rim rim exit device on the this leaf and a rim exit device on this leaf. What this allows is free egress through the corridor. However, you have to add something in the center so that way this um, or that 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 latch that's in the center of the rim exit can latch into an opening because it needs a frame to latch into. So what you have to use is a mullion in the center. Now, what that does, if you have a six foot opening in, um, in a corridor, this limits um, your path of egress because you have that mullion in the center. Um, it also limits your space whenever you're moving material and things like that. So a lot of people have opted to go to a surface vertical rod and applications like this you are latched at the top and the bottom and what that means is you don't you no longer need um, the mullion in the center so this creates a situation if you're electromagnetically holding the door open in a corridor you could open the corridor up and you have a wide open space uh, for kids to pass through in and out in a hospital this is very desirable in schools this is very desirable and sometimes you even see it in churches concealed vertical rod so say you wanted that opening space in the center of a corridor but you didn't like the rods um, hanging out uh, for everyone to see or say you're in a hospital and as you're moving your gurneys through uh, or your trash carts or something like that through an opening you destroy this bottom rod um, what you can move to is a concealed vertical rod very common in hospitals uh, you see them in sometimes schools but very common in hospitals so concealed vertical rod it's the exact same as a surface vertical rod except it's concealed into a door so you have to have uh, a special mortise throughout the door and also in the center of the um, in, in the center of the door to allow um, space for that concealed vertical rod so it's more complicated to install than a rim exit device it's a little bit more complicated to install than a surface vertical rod, but it's more aesthetically pleasing, um, you know, when, when looking at this as an opening, especially in pairs. And you're, the only time you're going to use this is in pairs, by the way. So similar to surface, um, it's a vertical rod, latch bolt, and rod assembly is concealed, two latch points. So it gives you the functionality of a, surf, a surface vertical rod, and it gives you the aesthetics uh, that you would find in a narrow style rim exit device because you can get this in a narrow style as well. The last one is a mortise device. <clears throat> this one uses a mortise lock um, for the exit device. So what this does is it conceals that latch and it latches into the frame of a of a um, of a single door or a single opening, but it latches into the door of a pair so you could use a mortise exit device in a pair without the use of a mullion um, but you'd also have to you have more components because you would need automatic flush bolts on the inactive leaf and also a coordinator this requires a mortise into the door so if you were comparing this to a rim exit device um, this takes more to install because it's more prep work and things like that than a rim exit device but could give you a little bit more security than ever makes a device. Just depends on what the functionality is of the opening. Unlike a surface vertical rod and a concealed vertical rod, there's only one point of latching with this device. So I've been throwing some of this jargon out there because I've <clears throat> spent so much time in the door and hardware industry. Um, some of you guys might not know what some of these terms mean, and I've, I'm sorry that I've, I've thrown this um, nomenclature out there, but now we get a chance to learn about it together. The first one is a chassis or a latch case. <clears throat> That's this portion right here. This is known as a chassis. <clears throat> this attaches to the bar of an exit device. This controls, um, this is the latching portion of the device. As you see this right here, this is the portion that um, ties into the push pad itself of the exit device. The push pad pushes this down, pulling this latch back. Latch bolt, which is this right here. Um, this right here. Th this is a chassis 
This is also a chassis, but the latch bolt is this right here. And this is the portion that secures into the frame or into, you know, into the frame or into a mullion if you're using this right here in a pair. And this keeps the door closed. The latch throw is the distance the latch bolt moves. So this right here from here to it being flush here. Here, let me do the pointer from here until it's flush is the latch throw. So it could be five eighths. Sorry about that. Um, this portion right here. So this down to this. So it could be three quarters of an inch. It could be five eighths of an inch. Those are the two most common in the industry. Um, but it's this as it goes down into, into the, um, the chassis itself. Some more components, <clears throat> our back set. Earlier, we, we were discussing a wide style and a narrow style exit device going into a um, into the style of a door. And this is what I was talking about. This right here is the face of the door. And as you can see, this looks like glass to me. This is glass. This is a glass stop. Um, and this is your exit device. And as you can see, the back set, this term right here, is the distance from the edge of the door to the operational center line of the device. And so <clears throat> when you're installing this device, you have a three quarter of an inch or five eighths of an inch um, strike that surface mounted here. So you have to move this exit device back so that way this latch will engage it. And so if you have a wild, wide style exit device on a narrow style door, when you push this back, this is where you would see this exit device go into the glass. Another term is touch bar, touch pad or push pad. This is a mechanism that triggers the release of the latch bolt. This right here, as we talked about, as you push this down, it engages that um, chassis, retracting that latch. Rail, this is the back side portion of an exit device, and this houses the chassis and the internal mechanism, um, the rocker spaces and things like that, that allows us to work together. Touch bar and rail. So touch bar and rail is this entire device and it's a complete assembly attached to the chassis mounted on the push side of an opening, always mounted on the push side of an opening. You can't have a push pad um, of an X device mounted on the pull side of a door. Components in terms of so some of the last ones that we'll see are trim. Trim <clears throat> operates the device from the pull side of the door. So as you can see here, we have a old style knob style trim. This does not meet ADA because you cannot have anything that requires grasping, pinching, um, or a tight space to pull. So most commonly you'll see this lever style and non ADA doors. You'll also see this thumb turn style. And if it's a cylinder, not like a night latch um, device, you won't see, you'll see this rigid, but you'll have this pull. Then you'll have a cylinder right here to allow you to um, access the opening. So trim operates the device from the pull side of the door. The lever type, which um, is most commonly used um, with ADA doors, must be used to meet ADA. So any door that you want to get into that's that's ADA rated, has to be used with a lever style. A knob, like we said, does not meet ADA. Thumb piece also does not meet ADA. Thumb piece doesn't mean that you can't use them, but you cannot use them in an ADA opening. A pool. So we talked about this earlier. Say you're in a space where, you know, that's electronically dogged. Um, you can use this pool to just pull on the door and open it and it will allow you access. Exit device uh, or exit only, there's no trim on the pull side. You will, however, most of the time see just the plate, but you won't see a pull. 
So what the, it will indicate to you is it's a blank discussion. And this right here is the discussion of a device. It's a blank discussion and it just it's it's a piece that uh, ties into the uh, through bolts. On the exit device. But without the pool, it will indicate to someone walking up to it that there's there's no access. This right here. Is a key in lever cylinder lock. Um, so this cylinder right here will lock and unlock the lever or knob. But where you see this is on some <coughs> economical exit devices. This right here is a totally different prep than you'll find in standard exit devices. Is you know this could be, you know this could be connected to a rim style exit device, but the prep is a one six one prep or a cylindrical lock prep. So it, that's tying in two different types of um, mechanisms, a cylindrical lock and an exit device to use this key and lever style of um, trim. So some more components and terms, removable core. I have a class coming up that's gonna discuss removable core more in depth, but basically, um, there's one manufacturer out there that um, invented the removable core. As far as I'll get you here in just a sec, but ask ask away, but uh, we'll answer it next. Removable core. So basically, it's a figure eight or snowman look, and the cylinder is removed, can be removed um, with the use of a key. Um, it's really common in schools, hospitals, and things like that. All manufacturers now have a type of removable core, but the small format interchangeable core was created by one manufacturer. And if you want information on that manufacturer, uh, hit me up after the program. So common uses, dormitories, apartments, apartment complexes, hospitals, uh, places where you can change around the keying very fast. Easier to change the lock and cylinder and high occupancy turnover. Uh, rigid. What rigid means is if this lever right here was a storeroom type, this knob or lever would be rigid at all times. Uh, it's fixed. Push and pull operation or with the use of a key, um, you know, you can pull it open. Entrance when touchpad is locked down or latch bolts is retracted by key. Freewheeling trim. So you have rigid and what happens is if you have rigid, rigid trim, what some folks have learned is if you take a sledgehammer or a large hammer or use excessive force, you can pull down on this lever right here and break it. You'll see it in a lot of um, hotels, hospitals and things like that where there was some type of forced entry um, or attempted forced entry. And that it, what happens is on key and lever style, if you do force this down, um, it could open that X device, um, allowing um, ingress into the opening without authorized use. Freewheeling trim, however, is that anti-vandal, anti-burglary um, type of trim. And what that does is when you're trying to apply force, it just it goes down. And so you have to have um, either a key or you have to have something that engages the X device prior to allowing ingress. So lever and knob operates without resistance when locked. Freewheeling trim only retracts latch bolt when unlocked, helps prevent damage or vandal resistant. Clutch or breakaway includes an internal slip clutch mechanism. Lever breaks away with excessive force, but it doesn't allow ingress. Lever can be lifted back horizontal to reset and helps prevent damage. So some will just you know have this freewheeling type trim and some will have this clutch type trim. Both are okay to use. Farzan, what's your um, question? If you want to get on the mic, you can. If you want to type it out, go ahead. Okay. So some more components. One of the big ones that I was talking about earlier was dogging. 
And Farmers, if you have that question, just put it in the chat and I'll answer to it, answer it when we get to it here in a sec. Dogging is a mechanism that secures the touchpad in a depressed position. In the depressed position, position retains latch bolt in retracted position or dogged, but facilitates push and pull when dogged down. Whew. That's a that's a big that's a big sentence there. Basically, the push pad on an X device by using this dogging key, you can put it into the push pad, press into the um, press the push pad in, turn the key clockwise uh, 90 degrees, and it stays and it holds it in position. What this does, it allows free ingress and egress through an opening. A lot of mecha um, a lot of maintenance guys, facility guys will use this. Um, for day, daily operation. One thing I want you to consider though, whether it be a dogging key such as this or a dogging cylinder such as this, by mechanically dogging down an exit device. One, you can't do this with a fire rated exit device. They, we won't even sell it to you like that. But two, if you're in a school and you have a mechanical key dogging such as this or even like this, when you dog that, opening down you have no control over limiting someone from coming inside so if you have maintenance that is um you know dogging a door down and they are not actively present at that opening in the event of an emergency a shooter situation um, or some other type of emergency tornado hurricane if they don't dog if they don't undog the door it's going to be free ingress. So if say you have a tornado or something like that, if you have a shelter space, which I believe um, you can't dog down anyway, but let's say you have a, a space that is like that, where you dog it down, you then have um, incremental weather, um, high wind or um, a tornado, hurricane. Whenever you allow that door to freely open, um, you lose pressurization, which compromises your overall building. Um, I'm not an engineer, so I can't go into detail on that, but I do know that pressure um, and keeping a door latched helps an opening or helps an entire building stay in position, and um, that's very important. So hex key dogging, cylinder dogging. One thing that I did learn is there is a manufacturer that has two different types of dogging that you know I've never used, but um, they are out there now. One of them is head case dogging. So on your chassis of your frame, you can dog, you can now dog down your push pad from that head case, and then also a visual indicator for your dogging on your rail. The two most important things that I want you to know that dogging the door down is different than locking a door down. So in schools and things like that, you have lockdown. So at your head case, you have the ability to use a thumb turn, a key, um, or some other sort of dogging device to lock a door down in the event of a shooter. If you are dogging a door down, you're not locking it down, and that puts you in a very compromised position. Keep that in mind. Mullions. Earlier we were talking about a mullion. Absolutely. Before I get into mullions, there's a question from Lee Jones that says, can you clarify the difference between fail safe and fail secure security hardware applications and function? Yes, I can. Fail safe, which is <clears throat> one of the most, which is very common, commonly used. Fail safe means that <clears throat> when you apply electricity, it locks the door down. So it's locked. With the removal of electricity, the door is operable. So you have, uh, it's basically in passage mode. You can have free egress and you have free ingress. Fail secure is you have to apply electricity to unlock it. So um, fail secure in the event of power failure, the door is locked down at all times. Still allow free egress but it limits ingress to a person that has a key, or if you have battery backup, you will not have, um, you will not be allowed access. Applications for fail safe and fail secure, especially with an exit device, fail safe and fail secure are only gonna be um, used in exit devices 
when we are talking about a fail safe trim. And what fail safe trim means is if you're in a stairwell, um, you can have limited access into a floor, but <clears throat> your trim has to be fail safe. So when you remove or whenever you apply electricity, the door is locked and you have access control. You limit access to anybody that goes into the opening. You have to have a key card. You have to have a key to get in. But in the event of an emergency, all power is removed. That means that the trim is now in passage mode. You can be allowed free ingress, free egress. Um, but it still complies with NFPA 80 and Life Safety 101 because, because it allows free egress, but NFPA 80 because it self latches and it self closes with a, the use of a closer. I hope that explains the question. Components and terms. Mullions. Earlier we were talking about Remexa devices. Um, with the use of Remexa devices in a pair, you have to have a mullion. A mullion acts as the lock locking style of a uh, of a hollow metal frame or an aluminum frame or wood frame. And what it does is it allows you to surface mount your strike um, on the mullion to where you can use room exit devices on the door. So some of the options that you'll have. Uh, shim kit. Since an exit device is surface applied, if you are surface applying an exit device in a place where you have a window above and a window below and you have a style across, because it is surface mounted and flat against the door, if you have a glass kit that is um, applied, surface applied onto the door, it creates a problem between the exit device or a conflict between the exit device and the window kit. So you use a shim kit to space it out. You can go out one quarter of an inch. There is one manufacturer um, that automatically on every exit device that they have, when you install it, it installs one eighth of an inch off of the door just at the rail to allow for that window kit. If you want more information on that manufacturer, um, hit me up. Their name is Precision, by the way. Sex nuts, uh, sex nuts and bolts. So this is um, a through bolting method. So your sex, nut, sex nuts are going to be on the pull side of the door. The through bolts are going to be on the push side of the door. It goes through the door, screws together, and allows for a complete um, installation. So without relying on the tension force of a um, bolt or a screw when installing a, an exit device, a through bolt, um, it's more secure. So it's also used on all fire rated openings and things like that because it, um, it, it completes that installation. If you're using a surface vertical rod, but you don't want a bottom rod, say you're in a hospital, you're tired of having those gurneys hit the bottom rod and bending the rod and it doesn't meet ADA because um, it's not a smooth surface, you can opt for a less bottom rod option. If you're using this on a fire rated opening, you have to incorporate something that's called a fire bolt, which is this right here. Um, it's the black portion that has the orange bolt that goes through. And what this is, is there's a spring attached on the back side. There's a plastic cover right here. Um, and this installs into the edge of the door. In the event of a fire, that plastic portion melts away and the bolt shoots through to the opposite side. What this does is it completely locks down the opening and it doesn't allow it to, to move any longer. So if you have a fire bolt, keep that in mind. Some more options, rigid trim, clutch trim, free wheeling trim, electrified trim. So electronically locking and electronically unlocking. So electronically locking would be fail safe. Electronically unlocking would be fail secure. <clears throat> Typical options, electronic latch retraction. So electrically latch, uh, electrically retracts latch bolt to permit entrance from secure side of opening. This is also known as motorized latch retraction. 
The biggest difference, like I said earlier, is motorized latch retraction has a motor that uh, uses a worm driven um, drive or worm drive and it basically spins like this pulling that pad down with um, the solenoid version basically the solenoid pushes through and as it pushes through or pulls it pushes the um, pad down magnetic dogging electric electrical magnet holds the push bar and latch retracted push bar will not move and not be noisy um, this option is used for security in quiet areas so basically in churches can be used in schools and gymnasiums auditoriums places like that latch bolt monitoring so unlike um, touch sense monitoring or your monitor switch that is right here the next one latch bolt monitoring is going to go in the strike portion of your exit device or even right below where the latch is located um, you're going to have a a monitor switch that's behind it if the latch itself pushes in it toggles a relay that relay will send a alarm back or a signal back to your um, access control software your head-in software and i'll say hey this latch has been retracted is it okay a monitor switch this is a read uh, read switches in the touch bar assembly provides notification when the touch bar is depressed for exit basically if you are using a delayed egress um, device you'd want this monitor switch because once you touch that push pad it's going to start that uh, that relay saying okay we have 15 seconds if they keep on touching this push pad it's going to open the door this is also used in the event of if you have um you know an area that is supposed to be monitored but you don't have a last bolt monitor you can use this touch pad monitor to, to say okay this person push through this exit device it's not a delayed egress exit device so more than likely someone is in that opening latch bolt monitor with a monitor switch so you can have a combination of the two um, you can have a, the combination of the two with a bypass you can have a battery powered exit alarm so we saw that earlier you can have a um, electrified alarm or you can have a battery powered alarm the battery powered alarm is going to be used um, in an off site area that is not tied into your access control system. Battery powered exit alarm. Uh, audible alarm activates with the touchpad um, when it's depressed for an exit, powered by a 9 volt battery. Direct wired exit alarm. So, the same as a battery alarm, but you can tie this to your access control system. Desirable qualities. So, supportive lead green building uh, rating system, world class designs using advanced materials. Um, so, improved aesthetics, world class manufacturing, global, true architectural finishes, uh, continual, uh, continuity of building design and function, uh, selection of electrified options, access control, uh, selection of trim options, design flexibility. So, um, basically exit devices you know we are always improving our our quality our finishes and things like that uh, with our finishes one thing to keep in mind there are a few of them that are living finishes that are constantly being improved on one of the biggest ones is 613 or us 10b because this is a living finish uh, we have moved to a power co powder coated finish that uh, resembles 10b but there's still the need for that old old style us 10b or 613 finish one thing to note though because it is a living finish once you touch on the bar once you touch on the chassis once you touch on the pull it starts to change the color from that dark chocolate beautiful brown it starts to remove it um, and changes it to that bronze finish that's underneath it or brass finish excuse me ease of specification uh, meets four criteria needs um, ease of installation because it's surface mounted Quiet operation, uh, motorized latch retraction, your electronic dogging, um, heavy duty construction, the longevity of it, minimum number of moving parts. Um, exit devices are extremely simple. Desirable qualities. So it's secure. It means ISO 1 certification. 
ANSI 156.3 grade one, 500,000 uh, cycles. Um, it far surpasses those 500,000 cycles, but that's the minimum. Um, it has a barrier free environment, five pounds or less to open the door. Uh, UL panic list, or panic and fire listings, wind, wind listed, wind rated, um, storm rated, and things like that. Depending on uh, the manufacturer, you could have a five to 10 year warranty on the mechanical portion of it and a two year warranty on the electronic portion of it. I think that those have been extended even further um, nowadays. So to recap what we were talking about, and sorry for going seven minutes over, we still have a couple other slides, but um, basically to recap what we talked about, what is an exit device? How is it used? How is it installed? What's the purpose? Why is it needed? Uh, where is it used? Uh, the critical selection issues um, that we that we face whenever selecting an exit device, and then what are the different times? What are some of the styles of exit devices, whether they're medium, wide, or narrow style? What are the applications, the different applications? How are they used? Uh, where are they used? Hospitals, uh, schools, um, and, and places such as that, components and terms, uh, typical options, desirable qualities. So with all that being said, um, you know, we go over all that and exit devices are able to, um, to accommodate all these things, you know, life safety, fire ratings and things like that. We still run into things like this where we have a, um, a, a you know, a device um, and we don't want anybody entering. Well, don't use the exit device. We'll just um, put a two by four in front, chain it down, and um, we have our own type of security. Now this right here is not an option that you would find from Dormacaba. You might find it with other manufacturers, but I don't know. Um, you'd have to check with your um, local representat representative. That's a joke, by the way. Nobody's supplying anything like this. So check this one out. <clears throat> this is gonna be your exit device monitoring switch. Um, you know, exit device A is not going to be able to be exited out of because exit device B is monitoring its use and same as um, the opposite. This is called the um, brother monitor, you know, got big brother over us watching what this one's doing, which is good. <clears throat> this is called a barricade device here. Um, this device I will not allow free egress, um, it's, but it does provide a, a good lockdown situation. Uh, needless to say, it didn't pass inspection. But it's, you know, it's a good point on why not to use this type of exit device. You can put so many things on top of them, whether it be, um, you know, chains or a bar or two by four. Um, or chains across to the other, other side. Um, you know, there are no words for this one here, um, but in a exit corridor, when not using uh, through bolts, you get into a situation such as this one right here. Now, you still might be able to use this exit device because the, the push pad extends over two thirds of the door, but um, this might have been used in an ADA application where um, the two X devices on top were higher than compliance. So maybe they extended this down to, um, to fit the need for everyone. 